Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Once again, Agnes Vivarelli and Dan Radio Style are here again to talk about some interesting stuff this time. We, had, we got a, a list of questions from viewers that um, we thought we would try to answer. And some of these questions were actually pretty good. And Agnes and I said, you know what, why don't we, why don't we go ahead and do a show on this? So Agnes, how you been? How's uh, uh, anything exciting new going on? Or Hello, Dan. Living yes. the dream? Yes living enjoying my insect infested city of sydney <laughs> not just insects but insects that can kill mind you insects that can kill in seconds yes and we're still here deadly I'm place on the planet <laughs> yes yeah. i know we're yeah. still alive and we're still uh yeah doing our thing month by month so so far so good do you guys have poisonous earthworms i wonder i i, well, I just figure everything in australia is probably just deadly viciously so no, so, the earthworms well, are an exception. Okay, good. To the rule, yeah. exception. That's why they stay underground, though. They stay away from all that other scary stuff. They're like, no, nah, man, no, mate. They're, that stuff's crazy. All right, whatever. So. <laughs> well, very good, very good. So uh, did, did you, uh, do you want me to start with the first question? We'll see how this goes. We'll yeah. just take it, yeah, we'll take it away. It. All right. It. So one of the viewers, I'll say it was Pamela, uh, she said, I would be curious to know how each of you got into LOA stuff, especially if one or both of you grew up being raised in a particular religion where you weren't aware of the stuff before. Like, what was the moment or the tipping point that got you into it and or made you believe? So uh, mm -hmm. I was curious what, uh, for you, what was the, um, what was the, your tipping point? Ah, good question. Well, I no, grew a up one. in a totally non-religious family. I was technically Catholic because being born and raised in France, but we never went to church. And I ended up moving to Canada. My parents immigrated there. And when we were in Canada, my mum, being a hippie at the time, was very much into natural therapies and organic food and all that stuff and all I wanted to do was go to McDonald's so I wasn't really listening and part of that was her listening to Louise Hay and I used to just roll my eyes and go oh my goodness what is this and I wasn't interested when I turned 29 and I'd already moved to Australia I got a tumor and then I went, oh, maybe it's time to go back and listen to Louise Hay. But that was like a, <laughs> right. like a decade later after mum yeah. had been listening to it for a long time. So yeah, it really was that very basic beginning. So I was, I think 28 when I got the tumor and that started my journey of really looking within at what was being created on the outside, I mean, this was a health issue on, on the inside, but it, then it was echoed in bad relationships for me, me chasing love and really getting smashed in the relationship department and also going into debt and then also never having jobs where I was paid enough. I was always, always, always having to work too hard for money and then that would smash my health. So went around in circles a lot, pretty much on every subject, love, money, health, work, feeling totally unloved and unrespected in every area. And that was therefore echoed in every area of my life. So, yeah. And I'm, so, I'm going to answer this question too, but you bring yeah. up another one. Uh, the way, Oh crap. I lost it already. All right. I, it just, I, I wonder, um, uh, yeah, I totally lost the question. Oh, well, it happened. <laughs> It's, it's on the floor right next to your feet. You dropped it. Yeah, it's like, I don't know what happened. Where did it go? Oh, well, doesn't matter. Yeah, for me, um, the big moment happened. I was kind of young, actually. And, and for me, it started like, well, one, I was brought up, I guess, kind of like you. I was brought up Catholic. Um, and we were religious. We had to go to church. I did First Communion. I did Confirmation. I did the whole nine yards. Okay. Uh, so I was kind of always sort of into that, I guess. But uh, I learned at an early age that I seemed to be able to understand how people were feeling so when they said things that weren't really in line with how their current feeling was like I kind of realized I was sort of different and could pick up on when people were lying at a reasonably early age and it was my older brother that kind of uh, I think started me down the path of sort of expanding that 
consciousness. And through that evolution, I learned that our thoughts are what create our reality. Really what we think, what we say, what we do oh. is what is our manifest. What it, and it, They didn't call it law of attraction where I learned it. Um, but it, that ended up being something that I kind of circled back to later Ooh. and it's like oh okay now they got a cool fancy marketing name for it yeah. Get on them, you know? i think so, it was dan i think it was just the new age industry yeah. then that's yeah. kind of and it, and it kind of was the hippies you know it was the hippies that kind of at those at in the in the 60s and 70s when we were kids it was the hippies movement really right right don't you don't you think yeah, which is funny is my parents were ultra conservative. My mom, it's on her side of the family, I think, if there is that kind of aspect to it uh, that this probably comes from for me because her dad was uh, kind of conservative as well and his just this whole belief structure and all that. So, yeah, they didn't really have that kind of openness to, I don't know, talking to dead people or anything strange like that. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting growing up. And literally, I lived in a haunted place when I was younger. Like, I just, from, like, very early age on, I think my life has shaped me to be different. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I just <laughs> lucked out. Golly gee, you know. <laughs> so, it is, uh, it is how it plays out, though. You're well, not, it was cool. That was not good different. Push. Who no, no, I'm different. <laughs> no. I, everyone I meet is just like me. I mean, that's, uh, it's awesome. <laughs> It's fantastic. It's like a hall of mirrors. Yeah. I've got to tell you on a, as a side salad. Oh, good. One of my viewers sent me a t-shirt. Well, she sent me two t-shirts. One says self love. The second one says organic nut. <laughs> nice. Nice. The shirt is already out yeah, there. I love the it. The shirt is out there. I'll wear it. You I should wear it You today. are an organic nut. Yeah, that would have been good. That would have been good. I like I think that. It's in the wash. Well, so, oh, is that, right? <laughs> nice. Nice. Are, now, are you at your, your, your mom's? Are you a... Uh, no, I'm in, a, I'm in my regular Airbnb in Sydney. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. Nice. Welcome yeah. back. Yay. Be, I know, right? It's got to be great. How long are you out there? A while? Um, I go back to London on the 17th of October to go back to the flat. The oh, little okay. flat in London, the little pod. <laughs> all right. All right. It's, yeah. But it's quaint, right? It's, uh, it's cozy. <laughs> we have, we yeah. have nice words like that for places that are like that, right? <laughs> So we got a, another one. This one's kind of fun, and uh, we'll see we'll see how we come up on uh, on this one because I think this yeah. is a good talking point as well. Yeah. Um, finding the actual question. So yeah, do uh, I'd like to? This person uh, it was Lisa. She'd like to know if you or I get anxiety or that mm. type of fear that some of your viewers get from time to time, and if so, what types of things do you do or get anxious about? Mm. I guess actually, after we've talked, I, I, there's one. I got an example too. <clears throat> yeah. So. You get go, first, go first if you want. And how do you deal with it? All right. Well, I guess I first. will. Um, there have been, I guess, on a couple occasions, um, times where I guess I did feel anxious. And I will honestly say in hindsight and looking back on it, I think some of the things that I was probably going through is uh, self-love issues or not thinking I was worthy. A lot of times it would be because I was entertaining thoughts um, of the societal differences, if you will, maybe of me and the person. And so because of that, I always made, I felt it, it made it hard to bridge that gap. And, and I think when I would think that way, it would cause um, like a cascading, if you will, of anxiety. Uh, typically, the affirmations are kind of the direction I would go. I will say generally, I kind of just do a lot of the, you know, imagine it, let it go and kind yeah. of go on to other things and just there's not a whole lot of things that I'm just urgently waiting for in my life. Like everything's yeah. pretty groovy right now. Like I'm surfing the waves. So I'm yeah. kind of looking out ahead and I'm like, all right, I'm, this is where I'd like to go. And I'm not too much looking at my feet, if you will. Yeah. So I will say it's probably been a while since I've kind of had that uh, anxiousness, mm -hmm. but I get it. And I think that's where a lot of it comes from, in my opinion, is that I want this right now. I want it fast. I want, and it's like, what, why, how can I, you know, and I think when we over, overdo it or over uh, make it too important at this moment. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, when we get it into that realm, uh, it starts to become separated from us. And I, I do, I think some of that anxiousness comes from that, that detaching our hope from our reality. I, and I, I don't know, that's just crazy. Mm -hmm. talk, but mm -hmm. Kind of where, kind of where I, yeah, it's how I see it anyways. Yeah. Strange. Yeah. So what do you, what about you? Uh, let me have a look. Uh, the question. Oh yeah, that's the second My, one from Lisa. The yeah, talk, yeah, you gotta get about Lisa, that one. Yeah, okay. Uh, if you get anxiety 
or that type of fear that some of your viewers get. Yes, I get it regularly, not just from time to time. Nice. I get anxiety every week. I get anxiety <laughs> about... <laughs> I get anxiety about the level of work that I have to do and the not having enough time because there's so many, so many ideas and things I want to put into what I'm doing. And I tend to, I've got a tendency to overwork. It's something I've got to constantly watch that I log off. And, uh, I can, I can being a creative person, I can tip into, overdoing like oh, like it's like workaholism really because but the thing is i love it I, that's the hardest part before it was workaholism and i didn't like my job it was just driven by making money because i was in debt now it's more i really love what i do especially creating youtubes and you know just coming up with new ideas for for youtubes and things like that so I get, I get this, I can't get as much done as I want to in a day and I don't have enough time. The thing is I've got the same amount of time everybody else has, which is 24 hours. The other thing I probably get anxiety about is leaving my mum in Sydney um, when I'm in London because I know she's in Sydney on her own. Um, that does create anxiety for me. I mean, not that she's old, she just turned 70, but I get this thing that, yes, she's got her friends, but... I get that typical eldest child thing of, you know, over responsibility. And I mean, I know she's fine, but I'm far away. And, and that, that the being far away when she's in Sydney on her own is what creates anxiety for me. And I know that comes from luckily when I was in Sydney, once she got hit by a car, oh my. she was walking along the, the sidewalk and she got this guy accelerated instead of hitting the brake and he ran into her and then he ran into a house. So I get that thing where stuff does happen and now it's part of what, what my mum and I have experienced. So I think I still carry a little bit of anxiety about things can happen. And what if you're not here next time something, you know, I get into that and I've got to D just take a breath and go, well, you know, whatever happens, you'll deal with it. You know, like everybody else, people are vulnerable in the world. That's how it is. We are vulnerable in the world to some degree. We all get born and we all die. And that's just the natural progression. Let me ask, do you ever get, uh, cause I think that was part of the angle of this question too, was do you ever mm. get anxiety when, uh, when trying to manifest, like you're trying to manifest something and you, you maybe get anxious or, or like, cause I think that's kind of what she was wondering is like, if you do still, or does that get yeah. to a point where that kind of stops? Um, uh, I think a lot of the time I would say no, because I think the things that I want to manifest now, they're kind of cherry on the cake stuff. You know, my, my work life's great. My money's fine. I've got a couple of health things that I'm working on, but they don't cause me that much concern because I know I've, I've manifested my way into the tumor and I've manifested my way out. So I know I've got the power within my mind to heal and create, create a healthy body again when I am out of kilter. Um, I do get anxiety sometimes about a big goal. Like there's something that I am trying to manifest and it's actually for my mum. Um, and it's a really big thing for me. So do I get anxiety sometimes? Yes, because I have thoughts of some, sometimes, not all the time. What if I run out of time? You know, she's already 70. I'm already 52. What if I'm, you know, like I get that time kind of constraint like a lot of people do. But then I just go, okay, well, hey, lay on the bed, breathe, say I cast this upon the God within and I go free and I literally do some deep breathing because when you're in anxiety or whatever, you're <gasps> shallow breathing, I make sure my body starts breathing more deeply and I literally say, I surrender, I let go, I surrender, I let go and I just change my thinking pretty quickly and then it passes. So I don't stay stuck there for you know months like I used and to. And to the point I was making earlier, and you just, I think, demonstrated it too and this is where I typically see it and so I'm curious what you think but it, it, again, it's that I hope I can do this before mm. we run out of time, mm. which is that time thing that I want to do yeah. it sooner. And yeah, it, I mean, one thing I try to remind myself in these situations is we're always in God's time or we're always in divine time or we're always in universe yeah. or sources time. We're always in the right time. 
and things are happening and evolving is as they should mm. at least. And, and maybe that's a cop out or whatever. I don't know, but it I, for a lot of reasons, it, it just allows me to keep kind of moving forward and not worrying about it. Right. And, and, yeah. and so I think that's where a lot of times that anxiety can come from is how can I get there quicker? How can I go yeah. faster, faster, faster? And yeah, you know, like we've talked about before, you can only do so much. And yeah, exactly. I think sometimes there's just an evolution that has to happen. Mm. And also when you know what we know, you know that that what anxiety, do you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know that that anxiety <laughs> is actually going to turn, send you in the reverse direction. So right, exactly. it's saying you got to surrender and let this go as quickly as you can. You're human. It's coming up now. Release it by acknowledging it's there. And I just say that thing over and over. I surrender, I let go, I surrender, I let go. Nice, nice. And I breathe because people say to me often, how do I let go? Well, it's a physical thing. You're hanging on. Yeah. It's like a feeling in your stomach and your head's going. Zzzz. So you've got to calm this down and then you actually got to physically do something, which for me, the breathing, you're forcing your shallow breathing to go into deeper breathing, which then unlocks the surrender. Right. And forcing is kind of uh, akin also to that uh, grabbing sand with your hand, right? And the tighter yeah. you squeeze, the more sand falls out of your hand to do that. So it is, yeah. it's one of those things where sometimes you've kind of just got to gently scoop it and just take it yeah. for what it is. Now you brought up another good point. I made a note this time, so I wouldn't yeah. remember. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but you're talking about the level of work. And I thought this was also another topic that is worthy of discussion because uh, as we get better and better at manifesting or as you use it more and more, and like you and I were kind of talking about some of the cool things that are going on in our life right now, right? Yeah. As you do get more and more successful and confident with manifesting, you do start to manifest sometimes almost too big, right? Like you get almost a little too successful in some ways and you'd be like, yeah. now you've got to almost yeah. manifest and taper. We kind of joked about the Ooh. pruning concept. Yeah. But I think that's something too that people need to understand is mm. this works so well sometimes or always or whatever yeah, but it yeah. works and it's like as you keep putting energy towards these things you continue to evolve mm. it out more and more and that's uh, true that's you, true you were talking about you know <laughs> some of the anxiety you get just trying to deal with the day and, and time getting yeah. away from us and the whole nine yards mm. well i happens. i've had to learn you know when i first started this i did my coaching course in 2014 and you know I didn't know anything about anything. I just thought, how am I ever going to create a business? Anyway, I was YouTubing just for fun. It wasn't actually to right. go, I'm going to YouTube so I can get clients. Right. Yeah. I right. was YouTubing because I wanted to share this information and just get comfortable with talking about it. So I thought, okay, then as it, I, well, I remember when I, it was December 20, 2016. Okay. I had 900 viewers. I, I nice. still remember this week because it was a milestone. I had 900 viewers on YouTube and between Christmas day, it wasn't even boxing day. It was Christmas day and January 1st news day that week in between. I don't know what happened, but it's like the YouTube channel exploded and the amount of people that wanted coaching just took off. And I had like about eight people in one week, which I'd never had. I used to get one or two people a month. Right, right. For, for, and, and I, you know, was still doing other jobs. In this week, it was just like, I don't know what happened. Anyway, January kind of continued. And I realize now this happens every year now because people are on holidays. They're reevaluating the end of the right, year. They're looking right. at the new year. Yep. So it's pretty much a trend now that I can see. Resolutions. It, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. And, and yeah. I'm not where I want to be and all this stuff. And I thought, okay, so now I expect this thing to happen every year because I know people are on holidays and that's what happens. They've got more time to research and look around. So then it went down a little bit in February and March. And then again, it started picking up. And then since then, it has kept going. Um, it's been a trajectory that's that's gone pretty much up. Yes, it's had little dips, but it's been on a trajectory. And I remember thinking, oh my God, I can't keep up. This is, how can I keep up with this volume? And I used to get 10 emails a day. Now it goes up to 50 or 60. And I started to feel this right. feeling of, oh my God, you know, this is, how am I going to keep 
keep up with this because I was now no longer able to clear what was coming in for the day. I was no longer able. So what happened? I started getting heart palpitations. Yeah. I remember being in Sydney. I can't remember when it was. It was about, I don't know, eight months ago. And I woke up and my heart was pumping. I thought I was having a heart attack. I wasn't having a heart attack. It was Thank palpitations. Thank goodness. Yeah, right. I thought, yes. I can't have a heart attack at 50. What? Yes. I look Sonic after tape. myself. No way. But Two it years was. of videos people would miss out on. Look at that. <laughs> but yeah, Dan, it was literally taking things on too much emotionally, feeling like I want to help everybody, not being able to, and then also having to say, I'm one person. There's many people that can help. It's not, you know, this is the thing that I carry from childhood. It's one of my negative things. I've got Robin Hood syndrome. I feel like I'm the one that has to ride on the horse and help everyone. Right. So I have to let that go and say, I'll help those that I can when I can, but I still need two days off a week. Otherwise, sure, I'm not going to have longevity and I'm going to burn myself out, which means I'm not practicing self-love and self-care, which is what I talk about. So I thought, right. you can't be... You know, let's not be stupid. <laughs> well, it's it's just it's it's very easy. It's easy to get wrapped up with it yes. and overwhelmed by it all. And I think that's also that's part of it. Is yeah, uh, the one thing that really is important in this whole law of attraction attraction process, and certainly in the mastery of it, if you will, is really taking stock and where you're at. Yeah, and paying attention to the signs within your own body. Are you getting yes. overly stressed? Are you? Yeah. I mean, if you are, you need to kind of get life sort of in control. It's not just about thinking things. It's about keeping kind of a balance and flow going. That's why yeah. it's unfortunate, but it's a little more than just law of attraction. Mm. There's some of that yeah. emotional well-being that is part it of is. this. And I think a lot of people want to just make it, it's all about thinking good thoughts. Mm. No, I mean, that's a lot of it. And that inspires vision and view, yeah. and, you know, but that's not a hundred percent of mm. it. It's it's a good chunk of it. So again, I, I think there's those balance that we need to really incorporate in our lives. And I think that also makes a huge difference when it comes to manifesting. It does. And the thing is, Dan, I've realized YouTube is YouTube. It's inevitable. It's going to grow. It, the, the views don't go down. The, the subscribers right. don't go down unless you really do something totally you know, yeah, there, yeah there's it's examples always out there. Go up, even if it goes up incredibly slow, slowly at one viewer a, a, a day or one view a day, it's still eventually going to go up. So you think, okay, I had to get to the point where I go, okay, I have to start outsourcing to release. I'm good. And yeah. the great thing is you, creating work for other people is a wonderful thing. You know, I've got three people that subcontract for me now to do different things. I love that I can give them creative work. I love that they can be part of this with me. I love that I'm just not just in my own head and I don't have anyone to, because I made all the decisions about everything for two years. Now I've got people I can say, hey, I'm thinking of this. Have you got any thoughts? They reflect something back to me. It's fantastic actually having someone to share the contents of your head creatively with and that you can bounce things off. It's fun. Right, right. Hmm. I love the fact that I'm actually like, touching and, and like contacting with the Agnes Vivarelli empire uh, right now. So that's pretty, that's pretty incredible. So I'm just whew, feeling good where I'm at right now. Thank yeah, you and, and the empire is uh, officially still wearing pajamas today. Nice. But those are cute it's, pajamas. It's really... That's those are probably made of silk from individuated <laughs> silkworms that uh, like were raised on certain food that was so pure. Yeah, it's amazing the it's, silk they yeah. use on those. It's a pretty slick empire, as you can see. Darn say. <laughs> straight, darn. It is pretty. I mean, well, we all know you're very humble and modest. And so, of course, uh, and the empire, you've got um, got things. Anyway, all right. So a couple more questions here. Yeah. As we side oh, salad our way. But that was good stuff. I thought we side yeah. saladed. Uh, side saladed. I guess we're making had, that word a verb. Lisa actually had a second part of her question there. Oh, okay. So let's, yeah. Uh, yeah, what, what, do you got it? Go, you got it? Yeah. Uh, I'll read go. it out and then what you yes, can please. answer it first. Some, yeah. since some of us can get caught up with things we don't like and want in front of us, what steps do you both take to ignore the current reality and focus on what you want? What does your daily self love routine look like? What do you both do to let go and surrender? There's the question. Right. So, um, what do you think? Yeah. So yeah, the, uh, the daily routine, wait, let me make sure. Cause there was a lot in there. There was, what I've only your... read you the first three or four lines. Yeah. It... Since I was going to cut them things. 
So, okay. The ignoring the current reality is one I kind of recently did a show on and I, I don't like to myself, this is my take on it. So I, I don't know what's the teaching or whatever, mm. but when it comes to ignoring, I yeah. find that when something's showing up in my path that I don't particularly like, I actually look at it and I'm like, why is this here? What's, mm. what's going on? This is interesting because yeah. I, 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 I haven't really been focused on this. I don't think, and maybe I have, or maybe it's here to teach something. Maybe there's a contrast, right? Because there's a lot of things that can kind of happen, but sometimes I usually try to look at it and I don't, like I was telling people recently, it's like when you're in a riptide, you don't try to swim against it because it'll just suck you out to sea. You got to swim yeah. parallel to the shore. So sometimes when we get our thoughts off uh, on a tangent, if you will, all you have to do is you need like an affirmation or something. And again, I, I affirmations work really well for me, but that's like swimming parallel to shore in my mind is change your thoughts from this negative thing that you're so f- afraid that you just had. Like mm. by ignoring it or by trying to trying to make it go away or, you know, any of those sorts of things, you just bring more of it. Mm. So like hug it, embrace it, love it. Go, Hey, I love you. Why, where'd you come from? I don't yeah. know, but all right. Thanks for showing me what you're showing me. Mm. All right. Let's get our thoughts back on where I'd like to go. And I was kind of using the analogy of like, there's a tree off in the distance and you know, that's where the little town is, but you don't see the town, but you can see the tree. So you keep walking towards the tree and maybe there's a rattlesnake in the, in the path in front of you. So you kind of go after the side and then eventually you're going to turn back towards the tree. Mm. So getting all hung up on the fact that we're not pointed at the tree at this moment sometimes I think is where we create again, anxiety kind of to the original question even too. But yeah, I think a lot of times that's what's helpful to me is not so much seeing it as a bad thing, but sort of, like I said, loving it, embracing it, seeing mm. it as something that's showing me something. I don't know, you know, it's yeah. uh, it, yeah. just, but not getting all hung up on it and upset about it. Right. And then I think yeah. that tends to make it a lot easier for me. Mm. And self-love is really, for me, honestly, the one thing that my routine is very, one, I, I do a meditation in the morning, usually in the shower. Um, and then two, it's really trying to give myself enough me time, uh, yeah. at least a little every day to just be and not have to do something for anyone else other than just be and uh, and and that may be just me listening to music maybe just you know playing a video game or something who knows whatever whatever feels good for me at the moment but just something that gets my mind off at all and I think that for me helps a lot just because there's a lot and like to your point like in the last year and you and I were talking about I have uh, enhanced my situation in life significantly and it's taking some adjusting for me and making sure that I keep that quote work life balance at at play is really really important to me right yeah yeah so what about it is and it is a challenge to keep that going like I know every day I go I have to literally pry myself off the Mac and go let go and do your walk and go and lay on the couch and do a meditation for 30 minutes because I get fixed. I get this kind of creative fixation obsession. I just lock myself in and the whole world disappears behind me. And then I look up and like the sunset. It's like dark. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. You're like, Oh my God. I I really have those bloody obsessive creative tendencies. So, and, and I, I it, what's funny too, just real quick on a sort of side salad, I know a lot of people would be like, oh, nice problems to have. I'm like, no, yeah. believe me, there's not a big difference between not being real good at this and like suddenly being very, very successful. Um, and I think one of the things, uh, I don't know, well, I think it's the next question. So we'll get to that. But yeah, so yeah. I was curious about your your daily maybe routine or what your, um, yeah, to, to her question um, to you. I like the thing about, what she's saying about steps you take to ignore current reality and focus on what you want. Well, I find anytime something's in front of me that I don't like and I go, I go, okay, what was I thinking and feeling and believing that I attracted that? Right. And, um, everyone's me pushed out. Everything is me pushed out. So I, I, that's what I do. I go, if that's there, what have I been doing? So I quickly look at what I've been doing. Then I go, Oh, okay. I've been standing there. My ex-husband used to say, um, he used to call me hands on hips, Vivarelli because I'd always be (laughs) (laughs) protesting about something. So if you put the fists in, I call that the superhero version. Cause that's like how the superheroes always stand when they're like on top of the moon or something like that. 
anyway. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You know, I just saw, uh, oh, so I don't have to listen to that anymore because we're no longer together, but. <laughs> well, there's that. There's that. <laughs> the comment still stays with me because he was right. So. Well, it's kind of fun. Do you still do it? Do you think do you catch yourself doing it sometimes? I do. I do it. Like in mentally. the middle of the hallway, like you'll stop yeah. for a second. And you'll... No, I don't physically do it. I mentally no. do it. So why is that nice. going on? And why is that person doing it? And why do I have to listen to that? And why is that person so stingy? And why is And it... why am I talking to myself? <laughs> so I do do it yeah. in that way. So, okay, daily routine. My daily mm. routine is pretty simple. I try and keep, well, you know, listening to Dan Dapani, which, you know, I've posted some of his videos and him talking about you've only got like that much energy every day and then you sleep for eight hours. I do sleep eight hours. I, yeah. Bed to me is more important than food. Yeah. It's, it, I really if I don't get enough sleep. I'm horrible. So for me, waking up without an alarm is my daily routine, how I start. Um, secondly, I have a cup of tea. I try not to check any emails or anything for the first hour of my day. I make it a plan to do that so I'm not instantly bombarding my head with stuff. I'm trying to ease into the day. And, I mean, I don't work for anyone else, so I can usually ease in. Um, While I'm still in bed for that 50 50 minutes to an hour, because I kind of wake up and then I lay there in a haze for about an hour, um, so I just do a Lewis Hayes. <laughs> that was Lewis Hayes. bad. I'm sorry, it was pretty bad. <laughs> Lewis Hayes. <laughs> had to. Oh God, you had to. You had to. Oh, yeah, I have issues. It's okay. I was I was dropped when I was younger. <laughs> Anyways, you were saying. You were saying. So yeah, I literally just lay there, put on a really. I've got a app called Insight Timer. It's meditation app, and you build your own meditation. So you pick the, oh. you know, the Tibetan bells. You pick the bowl sound. You pick the waves or whatever. You build your own meditation. You put the time length that you want on it. And I literally, I've made two or three. That's so awesome. I just play one of those, and it's just music. And then I repeat my affirmations. I do about a thousand affirmations in the morning. It takes me less than an hour. Wow. So I do that pretty much every morning. Yeah. I just think, well, there's two times I do affirmations in the morning when I'm in that haze and when I go for a walk and I usually walk every day for an hour. So I'm doing pretty much two solid hours of affirmations. So that's my routine. And I do a meditation at night as I drift off to sleep. I pick sometimes a guided one, sometimes, um, just music where I actually want to do my own imaginal things. I've got about four or five things I'm creating in my head. Yeah. So I, yeah. I sometimes do the five if I'm fairly alert. Other times I'll just go to bed saying, isn't it wonderful what's happening to me now? And just capture that feeling yeah. because my brain's too tired to go through different individual scenes. So you can sort of cater, you know, do it slightly differently. But that, that's pretty much my routine. And then there's the physical stuff. I make sure I drink lots of water. I make sure I drink lots of fresh juices. I make sure I have cups of tea. I, dr- I don't, I'm not a real fan of green tea, I'll be honest, but I am drinking a couple of cups a day. Um, I know I look better and I feel better when I do that. My energy is better and then I think better and then I'm more productive. So all my diet, I mean, diet was one of the last areas I wanted to deal with. I love sugar. I come from France. We eat cake and bread and pasta. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Exactly. All the stuff that. So I try and eat a lot of Asian food because that has mm. a lot of greens and you and know all the yummy. Vietnamese soups and all that mm. Thai food. Oh, yeah. And stay away yeah. from the rice stuff and eat more of the brothy stuff because I know mm. my body feels better. My digestion. I suffer. One of my issues, my Achilles heel, is headaches and my stomach not digesting properly because i take stuff on from my work and it affects my digestion so i've got to make sure i do have weak weak links yes i can change that and i do but i need to be make give it the best possible opportunity to work at its highest optimum level by doing what i know is going to help it to do so so you bring up a good point too because like all of us all of us uh (laughs) have our Achilles heels have yeah. our moments of weakness, have our, you know, like I, I don't buy a lot of junk food because when I do, I, yeah. I will just mow. Yeah. I will just like, I yeah. usually eat once a day, which I know everyone says is horrible, whatever. I've been doing it for forever. And I just, I've, I get heartburn if I eat differently. Right. So yeah. it's whatever. 
Yeah. So uh, when I eat, I eat. I'm, <laughs> I'm like a snake, man. I eat a lot and then it's just yeah. like it processes through my body or whatever, right? I, mean, <laughs> uh, I just fly in the fetal position for hours just dealing with the, dealing with that meal I just ate. But still, yeah, yeah. The same concept. It, it's, yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way as you. Yeah. Is that your Achilles heel, Dan? Junk food is definitely one of them. Uh, yeah. I, I do like to get, like, I like wine and stuff. And that's, yeah. uh, honestly, for me, like, losing weight, I, it's very easy for me to control my diet as far as, like, like I, I can go without mm. eating pretty easily if I need yeah. to. Yeah. And I've got a, a very effective diet that if I want to lose weight quickly, I use it. Um, but for me, honestly, if I don't drink alcohol for, like, a week, yeah. um, I can drop almost five pounds just doing that. I mean, wow. I think a lot of it's because it stays in the skin. It bloats. It's yeah. not good for you. Alcohol is certainly not healthy, but no. I, you know, I enjoy wine, but yeah. um, yeah, that being said, it's uh that's the easiest one for me to quickly shed pounds. And then I yeah. find that I I'm pretty happy with where, you know, I end up, but yeah. again, we all have, we all have our moments. We all have moments where I, my self-esteem is low or maybe I'm, you know, I'm looking yeah. in the mirror and I'm just not happy with what I'm seeing or whatever. Yeah. I mean, all of us get like that. It's yeah. just, you got to remember that we're more than, first off, we're more than our bodies. We're more than our minds. We're more than like, there's, we just got to sometimes, whatever it is that we're freaking out about, you're more than that. Whatever mm. that thing is, you're way larger than that. And just yeah. kind of try to remember there's a bigger picture going on in all of our mm. lives, especially when it comes to a specific person. Like, yeah. Yes, even when you get that person, I think the next question, which I kind of like, but even when you get that person, you're still going to continue evolving your life, right? Yeah. Like it's not, it's not like you're done to, no. with life once you've manifested your person back or manifested no. them in general. Exactly. Exactly right. Good questions. I thought so. Did we finish her question? No, there's more to her question. Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch okay. of her question. Let me read it to you. How sure. did you both maintain your new state when your SPs showed up? Rather than falling back into old patterns and how much of a challenge was it for you to change with all the experiences and success you've both had with LOA, what advice would you give to those currently working on themselves, their self-love, manifesting money, a specific person, a new job, etc. especially those who might feel a little discouraged or even lost at times? Describe the magic you felt when your SP started behaving in a positive manner towards you based on the positive projections you had of them. Oh, nice. Nice question. Wow. Yeah. It's like a lot going on there. Um, <clears throat> so do I, so when the relationship part happens, first off, uh, the X scenario wasn't really how mine played out. So my situation's a little different. I have yep. gotten back with X's before in the past. Uh, and there had been a, uh, a tendency to kind of fall back into old patterns, mm. kind of, what I had found. I wasn't really doing law of attraction at that time. So I, I've honestly never tried these techniques to uh, get an X back. I know like I didn't let go easily. So that being said, um, I did a show on my scenario. And then once I kind of finally did what I did, uh, the person that is currently napping in the room next, uh, next to me here, uh, came in my life and I, I don't think I could have probably, I don't, I couldn't have painted a, a more perfect person for me mm. uh, with my own brush and, and canvas. And, and I think a lot of that really came to how much time I spent kind of what I call the uh, painting your perfect person. I think there was a, a show I did where you essentially are trying to imagine what would love be for me. Like, what do mm. I need as a person? What kind of, uh, how much talking do I want? How much time alone do I want? How much going out do I want? Like the whole Mm. There's so many facets, like what mm. belief structure should they have? If politics matter, where should that fit in? Like just really trying to come up with like, what is it that I really, really want and really like would work for me? And it's just odd as, you know, that's what happened to me is exactly like, uh, I couldn't probably have imagined a better scenario. Yep. So it's, it was pretty cool. So again, do I work on it? Well, I enjoy the relationship and the relationships evolving. So from that standpoint, yeah. Do I keep imagining us together? And so, no, but I keep thinking about different places I'd like to go with her and different lifestyles, yeah. a new house together, that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. from that standpoint, I definitely hmm. get it. Um, my new state. So there's not really a, a, well, to me, that makes more sense from a work standpoint, like career, a new state. Cause I, I kind of see when you evolve and you could probably totally speak to this from the uh, evolution of your channel. But when you finally almost break through a plateau, there's a certain level and it's when you break through it, you kind of know it. It's that moment when you, maybe you don't need to worry about money anymore per se, right? I mean, might yeah. not be making gobs and gobs, but you, you're making more than you need. So you're, you're not really <laughs> worried about it. 
right gobs yeah. <laughs> uh but there's a when you get into that level maintaining that state i've definitely yeah. seen that come into play but less so with the relationship and uh -oh. <laughs> we're gonna get a live phone call here people on the air this is fantastic <laughs> No, that Love was it. my alarm to get up. Oh, to, that's your alarm. To be with you, you, but I said it an hour too late. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, you're, uh, you've missed that. That's well totally, done. Totally missed That's good. It. I did that, unfortunately, in our last one. Um, <laughs> yeah. And with all the experience and success, I would say the advice that I really try to push, um, and this sounds so crazy, but it's what made the biggest difference for me was when I finally, like Neville Goddard has said, when you realize that what you see in your mind is real mm. really when you finally make that connection when you keep doing these thoughts and then these things happen and they keep leading you in the direction you're going and you experience that over and over a bunch of times and then finally you realize that's this is it mm. it truly does work yeah that confidence is what mm. makes all the difference i mean and it, getting to that i know is tricky but it's really the small things and it's really paying attention like we think thoughts all day long. We're thinking about things all day long. Law of attraction is not something that you turn on a switch and all right, law of attraction on. And all right, everything yeah. I'm thinking, everything I'm thinking, everything I'm doing, all right, off. Okay, now I can think whatever I want. No, it's always on. That switch is busted in the up position, all right? So that's the part that I think people, mm. they don't notice a lot of the slack times in their day when their mind's just wandering on yeah. how Becky just upset me about, you know, the other day and she looked at me at the mailbox or, or you know, or whatever. And you're yeah. like, what? We don't realize when we do it like that, that's, yeah. that stuff that gets us. And we don't realize our thoughts are always Ooh. creating. They're always turned on. Yep. For sure. All right, I've answered a lot. What do you think? You, what do you got? What do you got? There, uh, let me have a look again. I know. Right? Um, <laughs> yeah. I got to reread it in chunks. There's like otherwise. eight, questions on this one question. <laughs> I know, it's good. Lisa put some good effort into her question. Yeah, she did. Um, so I've talked about the daily routine. How do you both let go and surrender? Well, I, I've talked about that already. How did you both maintain your new state when your SP showed up rather than falling back into old patterns? Well, I fell back into old patterns all the time. Um, it, it's not a straight line of going from being totally insecure and feeling unloved and wanted to feeling totally loved and wanted and confident that you're going to get your SP. It didn't happen like that for me. It's definitely, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. You feel great and high and you believe it and then you crash and burn and go, what the hell am I doing? And then, you know, you, you continue to go through that. It happens less and less until you become less and less disturbed by it because you understand more and more and more that you are loved and love comes from within. I think that is something that grows over time because we still get trapped under the illusion. And I was very much that person as well of thinking love is over there with that person. And if they're loving me, I feel great. And if they're not loving me, I crash and burn like being a puppet on a string. So it's like the more I did myself love, the more I practiced feeling loved and wanted, in particular holding that new state then it got easier and easier and easier on my side and then i attracted more and more of a good relationship on the external so the advice that i would give to those currently working on themselves is putting the emphasis on really it's one simple thing you got to stop feeling unloved and you got to do everything you can to feel loved all the other techniques, all the other stuff on the channel, all the other stuff on YouTube, all the other stuff about the law of attraction. If you can do that one thing and work out ways, how can I do that for myself? Your relationship with your specific person or anyone else or money or your health will dramatically increase because it is your unloved feeling, which is causing this icky green stuff all over you and it's like the things you want can't penetrate it yeah. it just can't yeah if so, you're not if you don't yeah. feel worthy you can't yeah. ever you can't ever again that's another one of those aspects of how we separate ourselves from that which is already ours is yeah. that i'm not worthy of it and yeah, yeah you're right the self-love really or the worthiness Ooh. either or the worthiness really, and getting yeah. to that i am good enough because we you know yeah. we talked about religion and, and believing I have to it say, one of the, the downs, there's so many good sides about religion, but the downside of religion 
is that people get told that they're sinners and there's something wrong with them and there's something right. inherently wrong and there is nothing wrong with you. It's just, you've believed that there is, and that right. is polluting your sense of, I am loved feeling. So, and that doesn't come just from religion. It comes from people's families. It comes from school. It comes from, you know, whoever was around you that was not in a good state and you've seen Usually it, that authority figure in our life, yeah. whoever that was, could have been school, could have been religious, could have been our parents, could have yep. been our neighbor, could have any, mm. yeah, exactly. Any number mm. of people. And you're right. There is that at some point in our lives, we had that, that separation put in inside our minds or, or whatever. And it was with me too, but I was, unfortunately, that was kind of what led me to my spiritual path, to be honest with you, was exactly. some of the contradictions I saw with religion. It was yeah. It bothered me too much. I, mm. I, I started reading an author, Neil Donald Walsh, and there yes. was a book called Friendship with God um, yep. after the first three books. And yep. that book, I think, really changed my life. Um, it just, it, it, I started working on that relationship with source, with universe, with, at the time to me it was God, because I came from a Catholic environment. Like, yep. like it was, it, that changed everything for me because it wasn't anymore what everyone else told me was this like being or whatever, like this thing I'm supposed to love. Like it was now my experience oh. and understanding of it. It wasn't someone telling me what it should yeah. be. It, it was me understanding it from my own vantage point. And, and yep. that was pretty powerful for me. Mm. Nice. Yeah. So do we, do you think we probably want to cut it here and we can maybe save these other questions for another show or do you want to go for it? I think we're pushing 30 minutes probably. I don't know. I can't tell. Uh, yeah, how let's long do a bit more. I mean, it says an okay. hour and eight minutes, but I know you and I talked for about 20, 30 minutes before we switched on. So yeah, if you've yeah. got time, it's up to yeah, you. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we'll go ahead. Let's okay. Do it. So let's check out uh, the one from Ms. Brock. Uh, are there any manifestations you currently struggle with or have you gained a level of confidence it takes to be masters <laughs> of law of attraction? That's like, that's a catchy little sneaky <laughs> term there. Miss Brock, um, good question. Yeah, she's she's awesome. Uh, once you have manifested something you wanted, do you feel it's necessary to do maintenance manifesting to keep it, or does this kind of similar to the other ladies where you don't necessarily mm. have to? Mm. But um, do you feel like you do you have to do something to keep the main, maintenance, uh, or does it just mm. happen naturally through your desires? Blah blah blah. So okay. two majors: career and relationships. I guess would be the two areas. Yep. Uh, okay. And money, I would say, would be the other yeah, side money. of it. But I, I, we can tie that into. That too, I think. Yeah, for sure. Well, I would say, um, is there any manifestations I'm currently struggling with? Yes. Um, have I gained the level of confidence it takes to be the masters of LOA? Well, I would never say I'm a master. I feel like I'm still, still learning to, to be, you know, basic intermediate. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I've no. only earned, you know, I don't know what the belt color is. I know there's a white belt in karate. What's the next one? Yellow? Uh, yellow, orange, okay. green, okay. blue. Yeah. Well, I'm about a yellow or an orange. There you go. <laughs> I would say That's because, yeah, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. It, it, it is, um, you really see the more you try to manifest and you're not able to, and then you finally break through just how much you make it difficult for yourself. I think the better you get, the less you go through that huge high and huge low, you're more, you surrender more, you allow more. And I think that's where I'm at with my manifesting is practicing more the al allowing and surrendering part because we are so much in action mode when we learn about law of attraction, when we learn about the mechanics of how things work, you go into, okay, well, what technique can I do? And what, you know, and you start doing all this, you know, whispering technique, rubbing out technique, scripting, vision boards, you know, imagining creates reality, da, 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 which is good. But you get to a point where you know that's only 50% of it. The other 50 is the inactivity. It's the surrendering, the doubt. It's the allowing it to happen in the time that it's meant to happen. It's the letting go of the frustration in the meantime. It's all those inactive things. Yeah. That's, I find, where I'm working more and more now. It's just going, you know what, let it go. Let's go have an ice cream. Or oh, let it go. Let's go and walk in the park and look at the houses and the birds. You must, you're much more quicker at disengaging instead of spending hours 
winding yourself up emotionally and then crashing because you feel bad because you've wound yourself up. You wind yourself up less. You crash and burn a lot less. You live more in the middle instead of huge highs and huge lows. You live more in that space and it's much easier living in that state because you're not um, destroying yourself emotionally you're mentally conserving your energy you're physically conserving your energy you're giving your energy only to those things you want to do you're saying no to a lot of stuff and you're living a life purely from where you want to be and go to and anybody that comes in that's kind of trying to say hey come this way can you have a look at this no sorry i don't have time for that and i don't want to do it and you and and that's personally as well as in work so you get much better at using the energy for those things you really want and therefore you manifest more quickly because you're not diluting and scattering your energies everywhere. Right. So, yeah. I would, I, no, I completely agree uh, on all that. I, uh, for me, I don't, I, I guess this is one thing that's kind of, uh, there were times in my life, so I'll speak to that for sure. But right now I'm, it's more of a direction. Like I've kind of said, it's more of a broad stroke and the way I, to me, I kind of liken it and the way it feels like to me is it's kind of like when you surf on a longboard and I know a lot, not necessarily a lot of people know how to do this, but the wave kind of starts to pick you up. Longboards just glide so easily. So you start paddling and it doesn't take much to get it. Mm. You get up and then it's just pushing you and you're yep. just kind of gliding along looking where you're going. I, you know, it's like if I want to turn a little left, if I want to turn a little right, I do. But ultimately, there's no like, I have to have this. I need this right now. This needs to yeah. happen. Like, like yeah. things are going in a groovy direction. Now, I will also say one of the things that made the biggest difference for me, and it really went back to when I finally made it at a big radio station in uh, East Tennessee. I literally had people tell me, you will never do this. You will never make it. And I didn't care. Mm. I was going to, I knew I was going to, I, and I was determined to do it. Yeah. So that was one of those where it wasn't like I was always anxious that I wasn't getting it. It was always that thing where I know if, since I don't have it right now, it may be tomorrow because I know it's coming. Yeah. Right? Like that was always how I saw it. And when it finally happened, it was one of those things where I know I can accomplish whatever I put my mind to. Yeah. And that is really, like I said, a lot of where my law of attraction knowledge came was prior to ever even hearing about like the secret or any of that stuff was kind of more just sheer determination and willpower. And then looking back in hindsight and going, yeah, that's exactly what I was doing. You know, I was using the law of attraction principles, right? So I I think the struggle, I mean, it doesn't happen immediately. So again, I kind of think that's one of the things that's understanding it's process, understanding that it's occurring, understanding that it's, on its yeah. way. And I, and I guess the only argument I can ever offer, cause I know a lot of people want to say that it can be instant and okay. I mean, it can, but like how often do you imagine it and then like open your eyes and there it is in front of you. Like mm. uh, it's, it, it's rarely like immediate, right? Yeah. So there's yeah. obviously some small amount of time that needs to occur or whatever. Mm. And I think it's just, we live in a reality that's a three dimensional reality based with time on top of that. And that's just, it's the way we move through moments. It's, it's a moment by moment existence. It's just, I think part of what being alive at earth is and yeah, you know, we can create that magic along the way, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. I and I think something. urgency is one of the things wanting instant manifestation says a lot about, I just want to get over to where that thing is, whatever it is. And you're totally in in rabbit mode you're not in turtle mode and it's the turtle that wins the race it's the steady laying of the the bricks to build the house in a lot of these cases too there's a perceived (laughs) happiness that exists with this thing we're trying to create and that separates us from it if it is your happiness and your happiness is not already there and you've already separated yourself (laughs) from that reality and i think that's where it also can get difficult for people is that how can I go faster? How can I, you know, it's Mm. uh, it's just relax, let it. And it it is that art of allowing. I don't remember which author it was that said that, but it was, it's it's that whole, is that Esther Hicks? Okay. I wasn't sure, but yeah, that's right. It's the book. That's the book I read of hers that Mm. really got me into law of attraction. Um, Yeah. uh, So yeah, it's that whole concept that really letting it come. And Mm. like, to your point, exactly. I agree. It's that what I call mind chatter throughout the day. And it's just, 
when I don't worry about the fact that I don't have it right this second, I find it doesn't pop up in my head a bunch throughout the day because I'm mm. not, I'm not, it's not on that forefront. So maybe, maybe it's unfair, but it's kind of also an advantage to eventually getting to the point where you've been using this stuff for a number of years and you've kind of got things in motion, much like the Agnes Vivarelli empire. <laughs> saying. I remember when you only had 10 people working for you. <laughs> like that? You yeah. like that? You like that little, I remember when I technique like thing thrown up there? I like that. I like that. Okay, I learned I that from my on. Yes. What's it? <laughs> I wanted to say something about, cause Miss Brock asked, is it necessary to ma to do maintenance manifesting to keep it oh, yeah. or does it just happen Good naturally? One. Yes. I mean, I, I personally do maintenance every day, which is the affirmations I mentioned and the meditations because, you know, I've had numerous emails and numerous people that I work with over the last two years. They got their SP back. They got a great job. And then they dropped the ball. They went, oh, great, I've got this now. They forgot about self-love meditations, forgot about affirmations, and then they lost their specific person. I could fall back into old count habits. countless stories like that. So maintenance is about, because you start to go back to your old, I need to get ways. Yeah. And you can't yeah, and, maintain. And that is an energy sucker too, by the way. I need to get is a vampiric, energy vampiric kind of process too vampiric. when you get like that vampiric yeah, that was i think that was your also the energy vampires i believe that was your term wasn't I've it? i've never heard it said like that though vampiric vampiric yeah well i thought you know <laughs> sometimes i like to mix it up a little you know, yes, and abuse the english language the way yes. it was meant to be abused. vampiric wow i'm impressed i don't think i've ever 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 heard that well, Agnes, <laughs> welcome to dan radio styles world <laughs> i uh i hope it's i think it's a real word i hope anyways but oh, uh, needless okay. to say i, I make up yeah. words frequently so I, I never know i'll ask um but my uh, suri bosley i call him right I'm ask him because he's i've got i bought the phone in in england so he's probably got that um you check know, the scrabble accent. dictionary see if it's currently in there <laughs> exactly is this is this okay is this word you know, is this a marked word okay right? olivia's question i'm going to read it to you what right. was for you some of your very low moments and how did you raise yourself up I know you guys are human too, although it doesn't seem like it in your videos. <laughs> Olivia, that's hilarious. You seem like you made, you're made of magic and 100% positive energy. So it would help to hear about some behind the scenes examples of picking yourself up when things didn't get go as envisaged. Damn. Yeah, I, I, I frequently like to joke and I can't say it because I know, but, but yeah, I, um, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I can see uh, certain things you should never say on YouTube videos. Anyway, um, for me, low moments, definitely without a doubt, I will say the lowest um, without a doubt in my life was uh, my last part of my adventure in East Tennessee. So uh, the whole radio thing was basically done. And I was uh, working in, in grocery. I, I was living in my ex-girlfriend's sister's house. Uh, I was uh, 2,400 miles away from my family. And I was trying to figure out a way to make it in this other state, right? I was trying to, trying to find different jobs, trying to get into any place where I could make more money than I was currently making, just kind yeah. of normal nature. And I kept getting frustrated and, and, and very frustrated. In fact, it was probably, um, there was one of two times in my life I was actually had suicidal thoughts, right? Mm. So it was mm. super low for me. And um, yeah. really for me, a lot of what I have found that causes me to have those depression bouts, and, and they don't happen very often anymore. Fortunately, they, I, they, I catch them earlier. And, yeah. and what for me I notice is that I tend to be fixated or focused on what I don't have, yeah. what I'm missing, what I lack. Yeah. And the more I think of that stuff, the more I create more of that stuff. And it creates this vicious spiral. And even if when you're having negative thoughts and a lot of us do it, I wonder if they're cheating on me. I wonder if they're at so-and-so's house. Like we start spinning thoughts and we mm. go down these horrific paths that really leave reality probably very early on. Like they're probably mostly made up and not real, but we yeah. believe them and we're spinning these thoughts. So yeah. I, I had f basically gotten myself to, uh, feel horrible because I kept focusing on all the things that weren't going right in my life. And yeah, there was someone that was kind of messing with me emotionally at that time that I was trying to, you know, make a transition and that wasn't going well. And 
So again, uh, I think it was finally acknowledging what is going right in my life. And it wasn't too long after that, that actually, uh, apparently my dad had been talking to my roommate and uh, talked her into kicking me out essentially. And because of that, I basically reached out to my parents and said, is there, you know, can you help? I, I need to, I, I need to get home. I need to get yeah. out of here. So fortunately that was the point when I turned my entire life around, ended up back out here, started a good career. And um, you know, it's, it's just really gone up from there. So nice. for me, it's, I find when I focus on what I don't have, and that I guess is why it's such mm. a, important thing to me and why I try so hard to like, no, focus on what you would like to experience. Stop worrying about what's happening right now is because mm. for me, when I do that, I can get very depressed and mm. I just don't, it doesn't work for me. I, I have to focus on what is going right and where I am trying to go. And I've just found that that tends to keep me feeling mm. a little better in the big picture. <laughs> yeah. So I think that answers that question. I yeah. Hope. No, that's good. What about well, you? I would say very low moment, my dad getting Alzheimer's and having to go through seven years of watching him slowly die. That was an incredibly low moment, watching my mum struggle with that, me struggling with, you know, just because of what I knew at this time about the mind and all that stuff, just seeing my dad do everything in his power to not help himself. And I'm talking about prior to the Alzheimer's, like the two packets of cigarettes a day, eating just, you know, horribly wrong foods. And, you know, my mum and I were trying to help him get well and he was just defiant that he didn't want to get well. So that was a real lesson in, you know, obviously letting go of just because you love somebody doesn't mean that they're going to want to be here. So that was an incredibly low point and it was, I was mentally, emotionally and physically smashed by that after seven years. And then there was the grief afterwards and, and I was really angry because I was angry. My mum was in, in pain, but I was angry. Um, so I had, that was a difficult time for me. Also, my husband taking off with the bondage mistress in New Zealand. <laughs> Every time I say it now, it's oh, still I'd love to just do that as a story. I mean, I th oh man, that'd be a f I think we could sell that. Like we could bottle that and sell that. That would just it's a book. I'm you. Oh god! Mm, Every mm. time Anyways, I say it, it's, it's a sad well, moment too. That That's happened? the sad part. It was sad. I, it's so not yes. sad now. It's I know. Weird. We've talked about. Yeah, I know. So there's. I know there's a little. So you and I have. You and I have talked about this a few times. But oh my god, yeah, that whole story is a. Uh, it's amazing. Madden. Madden. I would love to do the play by play. I mean, it's just a. Uh, some of the things that make me strange. Some of them. Yeah, that anyway. was a low point, uh, my whole relationship. And then they were sleeping, him and his third party were sleeping one street away. Fantastic. So I'm, mar I'm married to him, laying in bed on my own, and he's with her one street away, house sitting or something. And I wanted to burn the house down. Obviously, I didn't, but I had a lot of thoughts <laughs> about it. So that was a pretty low point. Yeah, I would say, yeah, when you're yeah. considering doing that, that's a yeah, extremely <laughs> not low considering, point. obviously. Um, right, yeah, yeah, considered it and spent a lot of time fantasizing about it. Um, and then my one of my other relationships, the I was with him for five years, and then he went, I thought to the States to see his family. He was actually going to see his family and get married and get his wife pregnant when I thought he was still with me. And I got an email to tell me that. So if that you're going to do it and use the miles, you might as well <laughs> do all that other stuff while you're there, right? Exactly. Get married, knock someone up. Bam. Yeah. I, that was my vacation yeah. to the United States. Well, there you go. I was like, uh, when you left here, I thought we were still together. Uh, I didn't even actually see that one coming. So yeah. Had some pretty heavy duty. I'm second best going on to create that. I, I practiced do they even it. make a postcard for that announcement? Like, how do you? <laughs> what's the greeting card there that you pick out? <laughs> hey, guess what? On my vacation, I got married yeah. and got someone pregnant. Yeah, oh, and she's my wife now. I got my wife. Oh, yeah. What? I thought we were yeah. all together. So yeah, yeah those yeah. were probably the three really low moments. And also moving to Australia from Canada really low hey. moment at 17 years old Re oh, really yeah. hated my parents for months didn't speak to them for at least two months i did not want to come to australia i was 17 i had my friends i was about to go into my final year of school instead i was with instead of being with people i'd been with my whole life i was in right. some random country which i refused to look up on the map because i didn't want to know where australia was or even where sydney was 
I had, I thought I'm going to know the least amount about this place because I'm getting out of here shortly. And I spent my final year at school with a whole bunch of strangers. And, and by the way, where everything can kill you except earthworms. Yeah. And that's when the lizard ran after me down the street. So, you right. know, the lizard was a high point. Being there for a whole year was a low point. But yeah, mm. there's been, you know. So I've spoken about it for longer than 17 seconds and I don't want to talk about it anymore uh, amen. because I don't right? want to create amen. it. <laughs> so yeah, those were, those were some of the, I think the so highs and lows yeah, oh, that both Olivia. of us have, go through. Yes, we, Olivia, she's yeah, good. Yeah, Olivia, we do not. It, um, you said uh, you guys are human too, but although it doesn't seem like it in your videos, I can tell you there's been a lot of moments laying on the floor in the fetal position on my end. I won't speak for Dan. <laughs> I, yeah, it's like a regular, I cry myself to sleep every night. What are you talking about? You don't oh, do no. that too? You do it right? when you're digesting your food every day. That's, that's, when you that's right. I know. Like <laughs> the snake. Exactly. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, we uh, We've answered it. it. What an interesting, uh, it was just an interesting topic, these questions. I have to say, it's enjoyable. I loved it. And uh, the people that these uh, questions represent too are just uh, great, great viewers on my channel as well. And I uh, just love it. And I was just good times. And I was, yeah, I was really happy with the questions. They put some real yeah. thought into it. And I thought they that was did. all like good topics. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff. It, it's cool too how we kind of both have like different spins on stuff and different takes. And it's yeah. still, we're kind of all heading in the same direction. So that's one of the joys of watching both of our channels is uh, yep. you'll find um, we both cover some of the stuff from slightly different avenues, but yeah, still exactly. ultimately pointing in the same direction. Yeah. Yours is just go. from a different country right now. Yes. Correct. I like it when you're in uh, England. That actually works so much easier for the recordings. Yeah. I'll be back there in three weeks. For our next one, I'll be there. Oh, that's right. Good deal. Cheers. Yeah. Cheerio. Cheerio. Talk, talk properly, not that crazy <laughs> down under kind of way. I love it. I love it so much. Well, Anyas, thank you so much. And everybody, thank you guys for, for watching and enjoying. And I know Anyas has a bunch of like books and classes and all sorts of stuff she does. I know her links are going to be below. Yeah, uh, I talked about that Neil Donald Walsh stuff. I got a couple mm. links below of some of the books that I'm kind of fond of. You can check out my site for those. But uh, yeah, all that good stuff. Good we'll stuff. do, we'll do. We'll post everything that we've talked about, um, any yes. links to anything, and you guys can um, chew on it. All of it. Chew on it is right, like a piece of grizzle, but hopefully something better than that, hopefully. Yeah, grizzle's not all tasty. Right. No, grizzle's not at all, in mm. fact. I'm horrible. about to head to the, there's an organic market, like a five-minute walk from where I am. Nice. And um, they make goslimi. It's the Turkish... Turkish bread with the spinach and the cheese melted and they're made by all these very stern women that never look up or smile. Boy, oh boy, they concentrate. If I could say people that concentrate, it's those four or five women that make those goslimis. They block the whole market out. They do and, that. And, it's, <laughs> and there's just no happiness, huh? No happiness no. at all, but that's okay. No. That's okay. And like, you don't need to be happy. I mean, I'm going to show you my... Um, I'm oh, at that oh, Airbnb. That is awesome. Yeah, Sydney on a sunny day. Wait, they have cars and actual asphalt out in Australia? I thought they you do. guys just had dirt everywhere, mate. I thought it was yeah. in the outback. And there's no, the there's no, um, there's no, no, no crocs? kangaroos or crocs today. What? It's a bit vacant of that. It's a croc-free environment. It looks like. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I love some of the crazy stereotypes us not very smart Americans can come up with sometimes about it's other funny. countries. Yeah, we're, we're pretty impressive. <laughs> pretty it impressive. Awesome. Yeah, in well, a not impressive way. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Have, well, thank you very much. Likewise. And, uh, and we'll, yeah. you and I will stay on and say goodbye privately. Absolutely. And bye, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everyone. Us. Thank you. All righty. Bye-bye. For it to enjoy a bit of weirdness today. You know, a little bit of or two organic nuts. There's two of us this time. <laughs>